So today we're looking at exponential models. And the first thing I want to talk about is like back in March of 2020 when the coronavirus was just starting to hit Italy and the US and we're comparing them, there was a curve shown in the New York Times. And this is what they showed. They showed Italy being red and looking exponential and also the US being blue looking exponential. But in order to compare the two exponentials, it was difficult to do when it was a linear over by a linear. So what they did is they chose to make a logarithmic graph axis and a linear axis. And at that point, then you can more closely compare the rate of x. And the fact that they're sh relatively straight, the straighter these lines are, the more perfectly exponential the growth is. And so you can see that Italy was quite exponential, then it started to taper off a bit. It's starting to get less of an exponential growth kind of curve going on. But you couldn't really tell that by looking at this curve here. Similar with the US, when it hit a place here, it was hitting quite exp strong exponential. And the slope will tell you the rate of exponential growth it is. The higher the slope, the stronger the exponential growth. And so this logarithmic scale is actually quite handy to see if a model is an exponential model and how those exponential models can compare. So let's take a look at this scenario here. In 2007, a university study published investigating the crash risk of alcohol impaired driving. Data from a lot of our crashes were measured with the blood alcohol level, the BAC, with the risk of being in an accident. This is the table and it shows the relative risk is measured of how many times how many times more likely a person is to crash? So, an example, a person with a blood alcohol of 0 0.09 is 3.54 times more likely to crash to someone who's not been drinking. So if you've not been drinking, your likelihood of crashing is 1. If you've been drinking and your blood alcohol level is 0 0.09, your likelihood of crashing is 3.5 times more than if you weren't drinking. That's how this chart works. Okay, so the first thing to ask is draw a scatter plot of B versus R. And if I do that, I've taken the liberty already. If I look at my data, I put L1 and L2, I put the data in here. I'm going to turn on my plot, plot 1, and I'm going to zoom to number 9. And so this is the graph that I see. And when I see this graph, this graph clearly appears to be an exponential, an exponential model. Okay, because it has this, this significant curve that is shown here. Now it says to draw a scatter plot of B versus the natural logarithm of R. So if I go over to statistics and I'm going to go to edit my values, I'm going to make a new column here in L3. I'm going to go on top of L3 and I'm going to go the natural logarithm of all the L2 values. And so L3 is going to consist of the natural logarithm of L2. I hit enter and it populates, it does all the calculations. And if I make this scatter plot, I'm gonna go to here, I'm gonna change it to, we'll make it L3, L3, zoom to number, oh, quit there, and then I'm gonna zoom to number nine, which is statistics, and here you can see it is, with the exception of this first little bit, it's almost a perfectly straight line. It looks like this is definitely an exponential type model, and so here is the natural logarithm scenario. This is LNR versus B, and this is just R versus B. All right, and so the values for this curve are going to be LNR, the intent here, and you can see them quite clearly in L3 here. Okay, and so now we know that it's going to be an exponential graph, and we're going to do it on this criteria here. Moving on, so now I'm going to state the equation of natural logarithm of r. This is a linear equation. And so I know I'm going to use this is L3 and this is L1. And so if I go statistics, I'm going to calculate linear regression, number four. But I'm going to have it with L1 as my x, and I want L3 to be my y and we'll put it into the regression equation of y1 in case we need it for later. And I hit enter, and I can, now I can say that ln r 
is equal to 23.8b minus 0 0.539 to three significant figures. After six drinks, a person who weighs 160 pounds will have a blood alcohol level of 0 0.16. How many times more likely is the person with this weight to crash if they drive after having a six pack of beer? Well, that's six drinks. Rounding to the nearest 100. Well, in order to do it, I'm going to use, I know it's in Y1, and one of the tricks I can do is I can go, if I go Y1, and I plug in point one, oh, point one six, and so now I know that LNR is equal to 3.2713. So if I want to find R, which is the relative likelihood of crashing, I have to raise this to the power, so R I'm going to, is going to be e to the 3.2713. So if I go e, oh, if I go e to this power, I get r is 26.3 to the nearest hundredth. So that means 23.365. So I am, if I have a six pack of beer, I am in drive, a 160 pound person is 26.35 times more likely to crash. Now if I look at my data set, that is in between these two values and that seems like a very reasonable output based upon this data. Now I'm going to take this equation and I want to convert it to an exponential form. Well in order to convert it to exponential I'm going to put everything to the power of e. e to the ln r is equal to e to this whole thing is my exponent. The entire right hand side of the equation is my exponent. And so this I know becomes r and now I have e to the 23.8b. Well using my exponent rules, I can say this is going to be multiplied times e to the negative 0 0.539. Well, r, this here is a constant. And so I'm going to find what that constant is. And what I can do, if I can go, I want to go e, I want this 0.5 was the b value in my equation. So I can, without typing these numbers in, if I go to variables, and I'm going to go to statistics, which is where I have things, and it's in my regression equation, it was my variable b. So e to the power b is going to be 0 0.583 times e to the 23.8b. Well, again, I can put this into my calculator. And so my equation, my exponential equation, if I go e variables, number five statistics to the equation, and number two, a value, this is going to be 2.21 times 10 to the 10 to the power of b. So here is my exponential form of the equation. And I can have it as here where this is my rate or I could also leave it with e where it would be the 0 0.583 e to the 23.8 b. Either one, both of these are can be useful. If I would do the exponential regression, my calculator will do that. If I go now and I calculate, if I go down, I want exponential regression. Okay, so number zero, I'm going to do it for L1, and I'm going to go to the original values of L2, and let's store the equation into Y2 in case I need it. And when I calculate it, you will see that indeed I get these values here, 583 and 2.27 times 10 to the power of 10. And so this is the form it takes. And so the exponential regression, what it is, is, is just a linearization of these data sets, changing these into L and R. And so, linear, uh, so linearizing data by multiplying by uh, 
logarithm, applying a logarithm, and exponential regression are the same thing. And so just to check if I would do the same problem using the exponential regression model, if I want to find it when r, when b is 0 0.16, well, I put it into y2. So if I go y2 at 0.16, I should get the exact same value of 26. 26, sorry, 0.35. So whether we use the logarithm equation or convert everything to an exponential equation, you end up with the same result. You have to follow the instructions of the question because sometimes the IB will force you to make this particular equation and work with that. But if they don't, you can go straight and do the exponential form with your regression equation.